It's the day after the one before it. The desert remains a desert. The sun rises and the Grauman sets on out away from it, chasing his own shadow, head bowed, using the brim on his buckskin cat hat to keep his gray skin in shade. Soon he comes to that black mesa in the middle of the desert. He sights it and begins to move more quickly, not like in his dreams, not like in those wild lands, but faster than he thought, and it surprises him, for he had thought himself weary beyond measure, yet his body saves something for him, preserved it for this moment. Scaling the walls of the mesa slows him down some, but not much. They're not too steep, and so he goes, half walking, half climbing. He has no proper notion of how to get her down, not if she should be wounded or parched or dead, not dead, not dead. He he knows only that he must decide once he sees for himself. The Grauman clears the top and there she is sprawled upon the surface of the mesa. He breathes a sigh of relief that surprises him to see her clad in buckskin, in tatters more whole than skin, but clad still. He steps toward her, and though his moccasined foot makes no noise upon the dirt, her head rises and turns toward him. Her face twists into an expression of terror, and her lips form a single word. No. The Grauman stops suddenly, not just at the word, but at her manner of speaking it. Not just at her manner of speaking, but her manner of looking. That skin of hers, it's hardly even golden at all anymore, but light, lighter, pale, with a few streaks of piss yellow. He stares, and the pale maiden sees him staring, drops her eyes, twists her head away. Hair falls from her neck, and then the Grumman sees something that turns his blood to water. Scars running up and down her throat, across each crossing another, all scabbed over. But the Grumman's never seen wounds like that that didn't mean dead. She pushes herself up onto her knees, raises a wrist, fingers dangling, silently asking for a hand up. The Grauman hesitates, steps forward, takes her hand, nearly drops it. It's cold, like ice. He lifts her to her feet and finds that she weighs nearly nothing. The pale maiden speaks to the Grauman. I waited for you. Say you so, I dreamed of you. The Grauman says nothing, and the pale maiden walks away from him, walks to the edge of the mesa. She turns back, looks at the Grauman so that something in his body says, run, run, but he keeps himself right still. She turns back out away from him and speaks on. I dreamed of you. You come to me at night and I watch for you. Times with hope, times with fear. Times you come to save me. Times you come to slay me. You both come to me, Grauman and pale man. So I get all turned around about what be dream and what be not. Used to long for sun. Pale man would not come to me in sunlight. But now it seems too bright, too hot upon skin. And all I do is curl up and wait for night to fall again. Used to wish for you to come, but now pale man come, feeds me at night, but more he feeds me, hungrier I grow, hungry for meat, gray or gold, but pink in middle. Blood be life, know you? Blood be life. Lie curled upon dark mesa, hiding skin from sun, staring out looking for what? First I was looking for you, but now, now I look for anything, four legs or two legs, anything with meat and blood, but nothing ever comes to this place. Used to wish for you to come, think on you with hope, then after nights of blood and meat and dream, come to think on you with fear, but now days go on, fear starts to fade. Still I fear you a little, Grauman, but Less and less. Soon, I think, another day, another night, I have no cause to fear you tall. So save me, Grumman. Take me back to my people. I will not stop you. And the time was I would have tried when I thought on slaying myself one way or another, but then came dreams, dreams of blood and meat. Now I long for those dreams to come. 
No longer do I lay awake, trembling, muscles all aching in dread of dark. I hear things in sleep and do things in sleep, and now I wake in joy. Take me to my people, splendor awaits them, and I long to share it. I shall not slay myself, nor can I be made to. I shall come to my people and teach them his rights, his rights that were ancient when theirs were just begun. My tribe will live in shadow of marvel. We shall set out into wild lands and make them more wild with our presence and dwell amidst wonder. Hear me, Grauman. Shall I give my people liberty? And there's a noise like thunder, and her body trembles, stays standing, though it trembles, limbs spasming, stays standing there for one terrible moment, then topples forward, and the crumman is surprised to see his hand holding the pistol, that it isn't trembling even a little. And she topples forward and falls, falls down the side of the black mesa, dead and still, but still she falls until the bottom of the mesa brings her to still at last. Night falls. It barely makes a sound when it lands. Now somewhere between the dark of sky and sand, the Grauman sets himself down. He builds a fire and crouches before it, hands extended. Shadows gather round, and the pale man joins them. The pale man comes, but is pale no longer. His skin is suffused with gold. Firelight strikes him and his skin shines forth like sunlight. Over one shoulder he carries the pale maiden, one arm fallen, fingers dangling, her skin now pale to whiteness. No trace of gold left in her, no flame left in her flesh. The golden man speaks, far to travel. The Grauman speaks, you say true. The golden man looks on, then tosses her down before him with no visible effort. She lands roughly, her neck twists, sightless eyes stare right through the grom and fade. I will not. She be dead, no life in her to take. What be the wrong of it? The grommen turns his head to look upon her. We feed not on our own. The golden man grins, she be not one of your own, Grauman. Say I, be I not one of any one. He raises his eyes, looks upon the golden man, nor say I, be you. Be we so different from other pupil? The Grauman pulls his hands away from the fire, trembling. He's been holding them right close to the flame, smoke blackened. He stands, slowly scrapes his hands across his leggings. Say I... You've been right good tutor to me. Be that all you have to say, pupil. The Grauman shakes his head. Say I, no meal can last forever. Now hearken close to my prophecy. I find some way, some day to slay you. And if not I, then other. The golden man glitters in firelight. He moves not, but light dances across him. What think you I've been training you for? That someday be a day I long for, pupil. And the golden man steps back once, twice, and though before he shone like sunlight, soon he is eclipsed by shadow, and the Grauman sees him not. He hunkers down by the pale maiden. The pale maiden looks upon the Grauman and sees nothing. The Grauman looks upon the pale maiden and nothing looks back. Then he drops to his knees, bends forward, and drives his fingers into sand and dirt, feels them crawling beneath his nails, clawing at the ground, digging, digging, digging her place to rest among the secret language and dark places of the earth, flesh among flesh. That night, the Grauman did not dream. <laughs>